Good morning guys. Welcome back to another video. 6.30 a.m. August 25th. If you caught last night's video, you saw that I hit a deer at last light. We gave it a little bit of an effort to track it. We really only tracked it to the last place I saw it. Blood wasn't like crazy insane, so we decided to back out, give him some time. Fast forward to this morning, we're headed in at first light to go see if we can recover this buck quickly. And I just hope that, you know, he just went down, laid down and expired and, and uh, didn't live through the night or didn't live too long. That's what, what we hope as hunters to do is put him down quickly. So we're gonna get back to where we last found blood and just go slow and if needed, we're packing the boat. So welcome back. Spikes back to his favorite bed. Except his buddy's not with him this time. Hope he's down. Gotta try to keep our elevation right here and wrap around this big basin just to where we last found blood. But we saw a spike, saw a bedded. You thought it was a doe? Yeah. Something across the canyon. So a typical day, I guess. That's that's the first time we've seen him come across the beds in morning. Just right above here is a, where we had last blood last night. And his tracks were coming down pretty hard, so he's either gone down or he took this trail. So I'm just gonna try to eliminate each trail by looking for blood. Like his tracks were coming down pretty dang hard, so I almost feel like he would have continued that way. But I kind of remember seeing his rear end facing this way. So anyways, we'll start looking guys. This is where we, this is where it all went down, right behind you. One of the last spots we left blood last night. And he's going down hard right here. So we just gotta determine which direction it was he went. is either his first bed or he just happened to walk over this bed which he's on a trail the, uh, he's just side hilled it oh there's a ton of blood up there yeah he's just side hilling it like he's definitely taking the easy route but he's keeping his elevation I can see some blood up on the rocks right there more and more blood up through these rocks here. Guys, this is the weirdest thing. We found his bed right above here. And since then, there's hair and what looks to be like, to me, clearly like drag marks. So either the deer is dying and he's just kicking, but there's blood and hair. Look at this, come down here and be careful though. This is, I would not be surprised to see if this thing has been found by a mountain lion or something. See the trail going down right there yeah, though. You can see it like there's blood and guts. Hair and blood. Can you smell that? It smells like dead. Guts. Like guts. You guys need to make sure to follow us on the Instagram, right? Alright, we just found the buck's bed and this is the craziest thing either. He slid down this mountain. There's hair there. Did 
tell me this thing is not being drugged. Yeah, look at that. Look. Dude, this thing's gonna be like buried in the trees by a mountain somewhere. Flat spot. Drag marks. Down to another there flat spot. Dude, he's piled up right here. You see him? Yeah. Dude, that, there he is. Dude. Yeah, he's freaking got him, dude. <laughs> what? How did he end up right there? We'll have to see if he got drunk. Yeah. Man. Or if he was just hurting so bad that he was stumbling. <sighs> dude. I'm so glad we left him overnight, and I'm glad we stuck on the blood. That would have been so tough to I track mean, at night. If you were just to lose blood and start zigzagging, you'd have to smell him. Holy yeah, fuck, man. dude. What the heck, man? Here, I'll help you drag him out. That's going to be tough. Yeah, I bet. That's the worst feeling, guys, <laughs> man. I bet that happened in a pretty quick time frame, too. Yeah. Like, yeah. quicker than you thought. Yeah. But the way he's tucked under there, that's just... He could have rolled. He could have died in that bed. Yeah. Rolled. I don't and know. Then just this is... Up there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That velvet, man. Dang, dude. I'd like to pull him up. He's pretty stiff. What's holding this one, probably, huh? Yeah. <laughs> we got so much. If I grab his ant base of his antlers, I don't want to miss that. You think you got any leverage? Yeah. There we go guys, got him pulled out of that dang pine tree. This is a three point I put multiple stocks on. He was the most active on the trail cameras this year in this area, the most consistent buck in this zone. I think I did three stocks on him uh, in what we call the staging beds. He did everything opposite that I did. I'd go low, he'd go high. I'd go high, he'd go low. So sat twice at the shooting tree and lucky for me the second time he came out 51 yards and yeah check this out we knew the shot was low i'm shooting a sever mechanical broadhead and good thing for me is that when he sunk he really ducked into it i'm surprised to see what the other side looks like let's try to find out see if you can see the back side of him, Martin. Where did that thing exit? Oh man, just about the same if not lower. Really? Yeah. Guys, I'd say I got pretty dang lucky to be honest. That buck being hit that low, it's not a great shot at all. But I really feel like we did the right thing by backing out. And he really didn't go far to be honest. Going to do a time lapse, guys. Usually, when we cut stuff up, I, I like to give tips and show some of the stuff we're doing. I don't want to mess around. It's hot. We have to get off the mountain, so I'm going to just get to work. But we're going to do a little time lapse to show you how it goes down just on a time lapse mode. And then Martin will get some shots here and there. But yeah, guys, we got him. We took some good photos. The bugs are getting him. A good thing we have some shade right here for a little while, but it's not going to last long. So 
to work we go i've got myself here's my little kit this is a, a meat bag kit i do have the Avalon knife with some replaceable blades and a variety of different bags and sizes so these will i'm gonna debone them like i'm gonna just get to work and get after it guys so let's get this going and then we'll uh yeah we'll see you guys on the pack out strap down still gonna work on his neck meat and uh, get some scraps off of him work is just about over well part of it we still got to pack the sucker out now all this meat gotta got him ready for a euro yeah we skinned him out I'm not gonna shoulder mount this guys I thought about it first velvet buck with a bow big accomplishment honestly for me like this buck it's not at even close to my biggest in fact it's probably one of the smallest deer i've shot in a long time but the work that went into getting it how many years i've hunted up here so this buck does mean a lot to me i think i'm going to european mount him get the velvet off the mountain today and see if they can freeze it or do whatever they got to do to it but yeah now like martin said it's time to get off the mountain i have not drinking a dang thing since since we woke up Maybe when I brush my teeth a little bit, but this is the Mountain Ops Ignite. This is the Hush Signature Series lemonade flavor. Guys, you can buy these in a single pack like a sample, but you guys should definitely carry some of this with you. It's just, just because it tastes good. Don't drink it late at night though, you won't go to bed. Here we go. I've never packed anything out with this backpack. This is my new Exo Pack. So, I know most people, or what I believe you're supposed to do, like Martin said, take off the top bag. This is like your loading shelf. You can put the meat down here and use these straps to buckle it in. So, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Good thing there's shade at camp. Good thing there's shade right here, honestly. If that deer would have, like, died, I mean, we obviously could have drug it to some shade, but this literally was not a bad spot for it to expire. Velcro on the outside as well. Sweet. I think this is made for your water bladder. Not bad. Honestly, not too bad. That was fun, guys. Good hunt. Like B Mac said in a text, he says that really builds momentum that you can carry on in the next hunt, and I truly believe it.
bush. Dang. Living off the land. <laughs> I think the bears, dude, these are way good. Little raspberries. They're not very big, but they're tasty. Dude, if I can do this over again, I just sit here, eat raspberries, count the bucks. Alright, I'm gonna go. Here we are at the beds. This is the zone. This is where he used to bed. There's my camera. And there's our camera. One last. It's the worst <laughs> setup. Honestly, it's only hanging by the nylon webbing and a couple logs. It's one of my oldest cams that have been up here since the first time I started hunting here. Stealth cam and it's just lasted. Forever. They should have some pictures of us coming across right there. So we're gonna grab them real quick. His last path through his old beds. Yep. No more three point at the beds. Look how much of that bed is dug out. Yeah. Kicking that up a lot. I usually bomb down this thing and typically because it's I'm so hungry. But now I'm gonna we're just gonna hurry. Be careful. Man, it finally feels good to have a bucket camp <laughs> after all these. Dang years hunting up here. Martin is breaking down. I'm basically packed up for what I need to take down. For me, it's just mostly get the meat down, some garbage, empty water bottles, things I can fit in my backpack. I'm gonna have to come back up. And Jordan Harbertson is gonna come hunt. I don't know if he wants to hunt out a deer camp or not, but if he does, we have all the essentials. And also my buddy Joel is coming from Nebraska, Whitetail Fit, he's coming out here to hunt. Him and his buddy Wes are coming out here to try their luck again at High Country Mule Deer. And if they want to hang out at camp, they're more than welcome. Martin is actually going to get some days for himself to go hunt some big bucks. <laughs> What's that? A lot of, like, what, seven days of edit though to you? We do have a lot of editing. He's still going to be able to come, but... come and run your cameras, do your morning, evening hunt deal or whatever. Yeah, it's going to be good. <clears throat> Um, hopefully I have the same look. Yeah, hopefully he can get in on those big bucks. He's a lot more patient than me, that's for sure. He's going to be looking to kill one of his big bucks that he's been watching all summer long. For me, I've got archery elk in Utah, if I want to hunt that. And starting, I think, September 1st or the last day of August, Idaho archery elk. And if I want, I can actually hunt Idaho archery deer. I have the archery permit. So, plenty of options though. Anyways, we're gonna back, pack this stuff down and my buddy's gonna meet us down on the trailhead to pick us up, so thank you, Tori. Minos. Get some nom 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 nom. We're going full digital. It's time to get out my meat grinder. This is what I use to do my burger. If you know Spanish, there you go. Got a bunch of different components. Basically, it's electric, plug it in. You have, this pushes the meat forward into this, which from there you have the grinder spinning because it's connected to that. And you have three different grinds. So a fine, medium, and thick. I like the medium myself. You push the meat down with that. This is your tray. Anyways, I'm going to get it set up and show you guys, and then we're going to grind some deer meat. It sits up right into there. 
and I'm gonna have some meat here. I'm gonna cut it into small chunks. I'm gonna load it in here. We'll uh, put it right into a big old bowl. And then I have to put it in the uh, food saver and vacuum seal it. Absolutely love making my own burger. It's almost just as satisfying as taking out a backstrap out of your deer or elk. <laughs> Let me show you how easy this is though. Turn that on. If you're not making your own burger at home and uh, you would like to, I would recommend getting a good size grinder. This is not like the most expensive one. It's definitely not industrial grade. It's made for just doing it at your house. With that, you have to kind of chop them up into smaller pieces. But guys, this is great. I've done a batch before where I added bacon, made hamburgers out of that, and it was amazing. We got the grind. We got the burger. Let me give you the up close. I can honestly... I, I shouldn't say I can do this all day, but I do enjoy this, guys, so much. This is a huge part of the hunt. It's a huge part of the experience. So normally, you'd pack it at the bottom, smash it, but someone gave me a tip uh, for packing or stacking it in the freezer. If you just flatten it out, you probably do have to use a little bit more bag than you normally would. But if you just flatten it out like so and seal it that way, they pack in the freezer much better because they're flat. You just close it, hit the vacuum seal, and it'll do the hard work for you. It's going in the freezer. It'll stack nice and flat. We got two bowls to do, so I'm gonna get to work. Guess I'll catch up to you guys on the next chore.